She's a bit like Chantilly Lace. Watch her go. She got a wiggle in her walk, but not in the good way. In two months, right? One, two. Two months. November 1st is the first time I released a video on this car. That was two years ago. It's a long time. It's a lot of spare time, fellas. We got a deadline now. So we're gonna dive in today. We have got to get involved in this body again. Now at some point in time, we built a brand new subframe for this and the body is locked in at positions along the subframe. So it's located where it needs to be, but it still needs a ton of bracing because originally this body had wood framing and better metal and it has neither of those. We got three quarter inch by three quarter inch square tube. Why? Well, cause that's what the metal shop had. They had one inch square tube, but I'll tell you what, it was like 14 gauge, which that's heavy. Especially if you're gonna be welding it to sheet metal, which is essentially what we're gonna do. We're gonna be doing the equivalent of this type of stuff all over the entire body until it is solid and sound. Make sure we're happy with it. Make sure our doors fit, make sure, you know, that we don't defeat ourselves by trying to move forward, which we are pretty good at around here, let's be honest. All right, gang, we got our trusty wiggly stick of truth, but there's only so much it can do for us right now. We're gonna work on symmetry. We're gonna work on making sure one side of the body is pretty close to the other, but you know, priorities are gonna shift. Door gaps are gonna change, like little stuff like this. We gotta be able to pull that like so. I don't know how it fit factory, but I know how it's gonna fit when we're done because if you got the whole bottom foot of your car rotten off and there's no subframe and everything is kind of just like a tin can and there's no top to hold everything together, you're just gonna have to choose where the things go. And if they look right to you, and they match pretty close on both sides, that's probably about as good as you're gonna get. Do you need to get better? I don't know. Ask yourself that. Watch this, fellas. If I grab this back piece, this is a piece of plastic conduit that Somebody bubbed in here many moons ago. It looks better than it is. So it has no structural anything. But if I take this back piece that also has no structural anything, well, if I flex this, if I pull back here, right here, the entire body pinches in. So what's right? I don't know. But we got some clues. Check that out, right? Because that's all cracked, looks like we need to pull back just a little bit. Watch her go. That's so much movement. So we're just gonna have to look at it and go, yeah, that's good. Hold it in place and then weld some cross braces in there until it stays where we decided it looked good. All of this movement would have been held in place by this piece being attached to the subframe and this piece being attached to the subframe. But considering it was all rotten off, we're gonna have to get them reattached to the subframe somehow, but where they go, well, our best guess. This is a little bit of a clue too. Until it wants to come back just a fuzz. So I think I'm gonna start by putting a piece in right here along the top, just to kinda, you know, make it so. Get some measurements and get started. Doesn't have to be perfect, just gotta be close. Well, I say that, it's gotta be close and under the... 37 and a quarter, we'll make that a little light. We're gonna go with the two by two by four metal bending device. One, two, three, karate! One, two, three, karate! Yeah, that's something. See how we did. Dang, would you believe it? It looks like our two by two by four bendomatic is indeed calibrated. We're styling. Gonna clamp it in there and build some more pieces. And here's an example of some forensic hot rotting and how one little crack 
can be so much evidence and change so much. So take a look at this. This crack right here in the body, you can see there's a hole here and it's overlapping and all that jazz. Watch what happens when I tug this piece back. I'm just gonna try to make that crack reline up with itself. Watch this. Look how much that's moving. So if I do that and I take a clamp and I can get it to stay there, you gonna do that little buddy? Yeah, yeah. Now check this out. So much less. That's just lining up the part that split back where it wanted to go. All sorts of things happen. This car was built and it was built in a certain way so it was under tension and then it got hammered over the last nearly 100 years. So the metal is functioning like a spring. If anybody's trying to put a junk body back together, keep an eye out for stuff like that. It'll not only get you closer to the original shape but see how much flex that removes. So I got one there, I got one there. We got one over there on the other side. All already firming this up. Obviously, we've got some welding and some bracing to do to keep it there with a guide. What in the hell? Is that seriously all we got done yesterday? This section is probably the real doozy. It doesn't need to be one piece and it doesn't necessarily even need to follow the curve. Even if it came straight along and turned, it would probably be okay, but we're gonna try to make it out of one piece. We can run it right along the outside and see if we can make it curve in two directions. So that only took me 15 minutes to clamp on there, but let's call this the top. I could fuss with this all day or just, you know, go grab another cup of coffee and think about it. And then it would instantly magically be tomorrow. So we're just gonna go ahead and pie cut. So there we were, just moving right along, and then Mr. McTuberson said, hey fella, why don't you just do this out of two pieces? And it broke right in half. So here we go, we're gonna make this piece, and then we'll make that top curve, and then we get to, you know, do it all again on the other side. Opposite though. Well gang, I think we're just about semi-professional if you're counting clamps per inch here. So we're gonna have to tack as we go, otherwise I'm gonna have more money invested in clamps than I am going to have invested in this entire job. Can't be going ham on these things when you're welding thickish steel to rusty, rusty sheet metal. Alright, that only took a half hour. I don't care. Do you care? I mean, if we add up all the half hours, we'll be done with this in three years. The pie cutting on the inside is a little bit more tedious, but, but I prefer that way to do it because when you weld, if anything, it's going to shrink closed. If you go the other way, you can get more of a bend, but when you weld it, it might change shape because the weld's going to shrink. So it'll change your opening. And if you need more than one cut, you just close it and then cut it again and then close it, and cut it again. Let's get it clamped in with 300 clamps. Get this side buttoned up, we'll weld our way across that side, and then we get to do all this again, just in the mirrored version. clamp palooza continues. Let's compare. Uh huh? Uh huh? We're on to something. This is making a big difference. Obviously, there was much more wood and structure when Mr. Ford had a bunch of those nice common worker people assemble this thing. But we are going to get it there. We just have a lot to do. Everything besides this little section should be simpler, he said, jinxing himself real hard. Seen it here first, gang. New world record for use of clamps per inch. <laughs> but I did make this piece out of, you know, one piece. Just gotta get it all welded in there. But you know, even with the clamps, we're better. We're just moving the whole car now. That's, that's the idea. Whole car as one unit, as if it was all one piece. <laughs> How novel. Hello. Up it goes. You're not gonna help. One. Neighbors have tree work about to happen. It looks super legit too. 
No company name on their shirts or their truck. Not even a phone number. Not even a DOT number. That's exactly who I want on my property with a chainsaw. Unglamorous work, just turning a car from a jiggly car into a less jiggly car. <laughs> Fellas, let me tell you what, this has been unglamorous. It's been tedious. And we are in the ballpark of nine hours into this project. So little of it you're gonna see because boy howdy, it's just a guy measuring Walking out the door, cutting, measuring, notching, and then two seconds of tack welding. Because again, until these doors open and shut, none of this, I don't know if it's permanent, you know? But in the good news department, we're moving this whole vehicle as a unit. So we got a lot of final welding to do. There's more bracing that'll happen as we build the seat pans and all of that stuff. But we've finally gotten to a point where we can attempt to fit these doors. Mm, it's bittersweet.